Earlier we were talking about the disclaimer type of will, whereby if the surviving spouse disclaims an inheritance, the disclaimed property passes into a disclaimer trust. And then we were talking about the formula marital deduction type will, where the will carves out the exemption amount and passes that exemption amount to a trust. Both trusts are for the benefit of the surviving spouse, but there are some key differences. And this slide is to try to help compare the two different types of trusts. Now, both of these trusts can, can be drafted to include other beneficiaries. This, this chart will, will show you the key differences. Both trusts are designed to provide income for the surviving spouse. You will note that both trusts can give the surviving spouse the power to withdraw 5% of the principal every year. If the surviving spouse needs more than the income and the 5% that can be withdrawn, then the trustee has the discretion to pay principal to the spouse. Now that doesn't mean the spouse can go in and grab the principal. It means the spouse can ask the trustee for principal, and the trustee's job is to evaluate that request to determine whether it's reasonable and determine how it affects the other beneficiaries. Of course, the other beneficiaries are the people who would inherit at the death of the surviving spouse. But now we're getting into some, some differences. In the trust that's created by a formula, the surviving spouse can have the power to appoint the property of the trust. That means the spouse can have the power to decide how the trust property will go to the children and descendants. You can even make it broader than that. The surviving spouse can have that power while she's alive, or even it can be exercised through the terms of her will. When it comes to the disclaimer trust, however, once a person disclaims property, and, and if a, a tax goal is the purpose of that disclaimer, then the person who's disclaiming the property can have no ability to determine who receives the property. Now that means that the disclaimer trust cannot give the surviving spouse the power to appoint principal. So that's a, a big difference. The formula marital deduction type of will creates a trust that gives the surviving spouse or can give the surviving spouse a lot more power over how the children and, and other descendants will receive that trust property. Whereas the disclaimer trust cannot give the surviving spouse that type of power. Also, when it comes to the formula type marital deduction trust, the spouse can be a co-trustee, and that's true also of the disclaimer trust. But once again, if the surviving spouse is serving as trustee, the surviving spouse cannot participate in any decisions to pay income and principal to anyone else. Usually that means not to children and not to other beneficiaries like grandchildren or other descendants. When we talk about estate planning, we like to alert people to mistakes that are frequently made. So in this portion of the, um, the podcast, I'd like to talk about each mistake. And I, I think you'll see that the mistakes too frequently relate to how the non-probate property is not properly coordinated with the terms of the will. And so the first, first thing on the list is inappropriate decisions regarding non-probate property. Now we've already talked about this. We know that jointly owned property with rights of survivorship will pass to the surviving owner no matter what the will says. So the will doesn't control that. And if you have too much jointly owned property, that could make the will ineffective. And same for in-trust for accounts and transfer on death accounts and life insurance beneficiary designations and retirement plan accounts. We've been through this already, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot more time on it. But I will be going into additional mistakes in the next segment.